Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel. And welcome to Before We Leave. This is one of my favorite games. I've been playing it on and off for the past, well, I suppose, year on Epic Store. Presumably it's a year because of the exclusivity they tend to get, but this is the Steam build that we're looking at today because the game is finally coming across to Steam. So, hey, just another good reason for me to signal boost a game. It might seem a new release to some people. And, you know, they've had a lot of patches and a lot of ongoing development over that year. So at the very least, you know, you can sort of rest easy that the developer is fairly involved with the ongoing development of this game. So what is it? Well, essentially, it is a, a city builder, a world builder with a big emphasis on the colony. Uh, I don't believe there's any combat in any way. But there's still plenty of challenges, you know, meeting food minimum requirements, especially for higher tier citizens, a la, I don't know, something like Anno that really sort of dominates that space. Um, moving and exploring other islands for different types of research that unlock different types of buildings in turn. So you are heavily incentivized to, uh, to basically cross the ocean and colonize, like say the desert area that has the red research. And then beyond that, and shamefully, I haven't gotten super far in this, but we might get a bit further now that this is going to be back in the zeitgeist. But you go into interplanetary or intra intra inter interplanetary, uh, and start flying little spaceships around, and you know it just scales up essentially. It's very very pretty, very well put together, um, and look. I will, I will just say, this comes up on the channel occasionally, I'm not a stickler for violence, you know, I'm not one of those sooks that can't stand, you know, blowing dudes heads off in Doom and all that. There's definitely a place for it, but I do feel that a lot of games have lent on that as a crutch as well. Violence doesn't have to be the only gameplay loop. There's a place for it for sure, but I appreciate a game that actually goes all in on an interesting loop that isn't actually just built around killing the enemy or anything like that. I, I, I actually, big respect for a game that can leave that at the door and still make a very compelling core sort of gameplay experience. Anyway, um, new game, let's go. Tutorial, I don't think I'll need that. We should be all right. Difficulty presets, well, presets, I suppose. Let's go default. Um, number of planets, five. Game seed, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's go. Doesn't seem that random, but that's okay. In bygone times, humanity descended into bunkers to escape a galactic disaster. And only centuries later, when the cause of the calamity was forgotten, did humanity emerge. Having lost all but remnants of their past history and knowledge, they begin once again on a planet born anew. Now that's interesting. The, uh, the, f uh, like uh, Death Stranding does it, for example. The the whole post-apocalypse regaining lost knowledge of our forefathers. I'm seeing that more and more as a narrative device in video games. It's a really interesting phenomena because video games narratively obviously borrow quite a lot from cinema and video and and uh, TV shows before them, right? And in books, of course. But this is almost unique to video games. I'm not going to say that it's unique. I, um, you know, there's, there's probably movies and all that sort of on that premise. But a lot of video games with the sort of rediscovering forgotten knowledge of our forebears is... I'm seeing it so much more and more, and to be honest, I'm really warming up to it. I don't think it's a terrible narrative plot device. It's better than the amnesia start that we always see. Oh, I forgot my memory, so I'm level one again, you know? Anyway, so our little dudes come out of the vault, and the interesting thing is that the vault always generates very, very slowly some water and some potatoes, and it still has uh, 47 meeples in there. So this is really important. It's good to point out that this makes this game unbrickable, right? Some of these colony management games forget that you've got to be careful that if the dude doesn't get the right build order at the beginning, they will brick their game. And that's not fun. And I would argue that's poor game design. The player should be allowed to mess up. So while you don't ever want to rely on this food production, it's very slow and it will kind of slow your entire uh, civilization. It won't grind it to a halt, but it will grind it to a snail's pace. And the other thing is as well, that once we have all our dudes out, 
Um, we then we need to rely on schools and that sort of stuff to generate more people. Anyway, ruin generator. So the, the and, and this is these are lost bits of technology that if we repair them, this is how we get boats. This is how we uh, make power and, and get tools as well. I believe is this. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a cool little sort of launching off point. Anyway, so at the moment we we don't really have houses for our population. So we're going to build them on the hex. And the trick is that they have to be adjacent to a road. Um, so let's just say we put that dude there. They'll come and build the house. And I believe that once you give... Uh, I'm not sure how many population the house can do. Let's say five or something. People will pop out of the vault. I believe. As long as all this they're satisfied with all their needs too. Um, there, you go, there you go. Well, they're going into the house. Three out of two. Okay, so that holds two. Something interesting is this combo system, right? You can see here bonuses from being next to accommodation, one nearby and two nearby. And then you've got also bonuses by being next to fields and wells, okay? So there's a huge synergistic relationship with how you place your buildings. I don't believe you're punished terribly for knocking down buildings and building them again, but if I were to put another house next to this one, once it builds, um, can we actually see formally how many this holds? I mean, we know it's two, but can we see it on here? Um, maybe not. But you can see there we're getting six, right? Because presumably each of them are providing three. You can see the bonus there. One nearby accommodation plus one, okay? So you take that one further. As we said, two will give you plus two. So if we were to... Uh, well, I think we press R for road. There we go. If we were to build a road all the way around there and put yet another house there, we're going to get a huge synergy off of these three houses next to each other. Can we speed the game up easily? Uh, full seam ahead, let's go. And look at that, you can see 12 population because we're getting four from each, four, eight, 12. So it's just a really basic example of how that sort of works. You can see there, two nearby, plus two. I don't believe you can get more than two. But then on top of that, we could put fields and uh, water as well in any sort of combination to, to figure it out. So you could, you could come up with sort of little mini shires in a way to come up with the best use of space. However, space is not necessarily at a premium at the moment. So the combo system is good, but it's not the end of the world either. The game does factor into the distance that they have to travel by road, especially when you go to like a desert biome where it gets really hot. Um, so that becomes like a, a consideration, I suppose you could say. Um, what is going on there? Little, little, no pollution, road, no speed penalty. Okay. Um, okay, so where, where were we? Um, oh, you can rotate the camera. Thank you, game. So you can see here our wood sort of situation is going down. So let's maybe make a wood man or whatever you want to bloody call him, right? Woodcutter. And you can see here uh, bonuses, plus one. Ne uh, nearby forest gives you increased wood storage. Um, let's see. Can that? How much does that stack? Three nearby forests. So it's one or three, basically. Um, oh, we'll just go with the one. That's fine. We'll speed that up. And you'll, you'll see the little dude will run out to the forest and chop down the trees. And they, as you can see there, they regenerate up until max. So they regrow. You can permanently delete these tiles and you will have to at certain points. But then you can see the little dudes just cruising around, doing their work. Look how cute they are. You can hear him working on the on the sawmill. And there we go. Now we're building some planks there. And so at a glance, you can see the little red arrows give you an idea if you're out, you know, whether you're uh, out producing or out using stuff. And then you've got pull downs here as well from food. So, you know, it's telling us that we're, we're essentially going through water and potatoes faster than a uh, home base can basically grow them. In fact, I don't think home base is really making them at all at the moment. Anyway. So let's do something about that. We'll get a well in play. Now, there's negative debuffs as well. 
right? So if you do put it next to accommodation, as we mentioned before, this can make you get more accommodation, but it also it lowers the the uh, efficiency of the well. All right. So generally speaking, gets a bonus or penalty on rainforests depending on how many forests remain. Oh, okay. But generally speaking, putting a well on its lonesome is the GO. So we're going to do that. Now, why is that crossed out? Oh, because it needs stone. And we want to grow some fields. All right. Bonus from being next to fields. Right, so we get more of them together. It gives you as a bonus. Production sped up if it's next to accommodation. A bonus or penalty in rainforest. This is really interesting. I haven't seen those before. That must have been introduced since the last time I played. Okay, so let's put that there. Get some potato production going. So that should give us a rough idea. Available, allocated. And now over here, what else have we got going on? Stone. So stone, you need to actually go up into these mountains and mine out old like skyscrapers. A sort of core thing to that is building an elevator, which I don't believe we have at the start. But if we get a, an explorer's hut, and a library, we're going to be able to get technology. Um, research new inventions. And that needs stone as well. Okay, so first things first, let's get the explorer's hut going. And you can see this over here. This is just technology. And this, well, Northgard is something I'd compare it to, but a lot of people might not be familiar with Northgard. But essentially, once you allocate a dude to this explorer's hut, or I think he automatically takes the job... He's just going to wander around the land and go and grab these on autopilot and bring them back. And that will give us essentially a research currency here, which we have at zero. We can then turn that into, see now, there he is there with his little exploring hat. And off he bloody goes. Look, he's got his little, little bloody book or something like that. Brings it back. Generates currency. Nice. So they'll keep doing that until they farm out all of the technology on the landmass, right? Um, now, like I said, we're going to have to build this, which is a library. Uh, let's just plonk that there. We're short stone. And so you can go to these natural boulders and demolish them, I believe. Gives three stone. I don't know if they uh, really do anything other than just giving stone. That's interesting. These boulders never existed when I previously played. It was... You'd have to knock down a forest, and the forest would actually give you a little bit of stone. So that's that's cool that they've changed that a little bit. Hmm. I like that. Okay. It's cool coming back to this. There's been quite a bit changed. There you go. So they're going to finish building that, and then we'll, we'll have access to our tech tree. Cool. Cool. So we open that up, and it's actually pretty robust. You can see quite a few things going on. The elevator is kind of a top priority, so we want to research that. There we go. Perfect timing. We've got enough currency, so that's researching away. And then once we can build the elevator, we will sort of path a road. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we uh, get the ball rolling there. Path the road up into the mountains to get stone. How's this going? Looks like our potato situation's fairly steady. But the game's saying that maybe we could use more water, which is funny because we have 40, which was kind of our max, I think, at the moment. Um, that's all right. Nonetheless, let's build another well. New research available probably helps to just have the research constantly going. So let's build a warehouse or research a warehouse. We've got a new category now. Look at that. That's where the elevator is. So we're going to plonk him. Let's put him there. All right. And uh, we need to build a mine, which I suppose we're probably going to need to research, right? Mining 10. There you go. 
Cool. Uh, meanwhile, what's going on here? No stone available. Oh, to make a well. All right, well, let's demolish that. We could probably use some more people. So we'll build some accommodation to get them up here. Might do the same sort of little trifecta. Hmm. Do I knock down some trees to make room for them? Maybe not. Let's destroy this well. Oh, we don't have to push the uh, the combo, but yeah, you know, might as well. I don't know if the wells multiply by being next to each other. Yeah, we'll just do it anyway, even though there's no synergy. Cool. Let's research mining. Now, what was the other thing we could build? A warehouse. Stores resources. We're going to need tools for that. Which is interesting. Okay, so here's our sort of tool place. We need to build a road to it. And we can actually say convert 15 wood into five tools. And they come and use this magic technology. Again, it helps make sure that we don't brick the game. Seems we could use more wood. What we might actually do is knock down this forest and we'll put a woodcutter in there to get the three adjacency bonus. I'm not sure if you can reforest. I don't know if that's a thing. So that'll give us a bit more storage. Here we go, now we can build the miner. Building requires an adjacent mountain. Building must face a road, so let's put a road there. Um, there we go, perfect. And you see the little dudes will come and they'll use the lift. There you go. Oh, they're cute. Now we're generating stone. Oh, look at this. There's some music going on. I believe... Uh, is that a happiness thing? Like, that makes some... People don't have a job yet or can't get enough to eat or drink will wait here. Yeah, that's... So your, your production chain will grind to a halt. Like, people don't die or anything like that, but if you don't look after them, they will... They will basically just freeze up and, and sit idle. All right, let's get repair. Allows repair of ancient ruined buildings. Okay, that's coming up. Build another tool. Um, potatoes, we could use some more of them. Building must face a road. No. Funnily enough, we're going to just keep moving these wells, I think. Especially since they don't have bonuses themselves. I'll just build a new well over here. Build a road there. Is that like debris? Ah, cool. It, it ditches some of its resources. That's cool. There you go, there's some tools getting made. Get some more farmers. Look at that, our population's full right up. Repair research complete, okay. Gardening's next on the docket. There we go, perfect. So then we'll be able to make veggies that aren't, well, aren't potatoes, basically. I think we can now repair this ruin generator, so let's do that. Could probably repair this too. Ah, but you need power. But power took me a little while to get my head around when I first played this. Unless they've changed it. It's like a physical resource like wood. Um, 
this generator will cre- will generate power, and, but it gets stored and bloody carried around by hand. Like, I don't know, think of it as giant batteries or something like that, right? What's going on here? Oh, we're going through the green resource. Yeah, see, so they're going to bring wood in there to generate power. You can see here we need a lot more tools to repair this boat, which we can then go exploring with. You need a lot more wood. There we go. We'll queue up some more tools. Um, and we can actually get like a blacksmith chain going as well. So we don't have to rely on this thing like 15 for five isn't a great exchange, but we can get to a point where we start smelting and building our own tools. Um, Looks like everything's kind of steadying out a fair bit. Um, I might build another few houses. Let's do something like that. It's going to use up a lot of our wood. That's all right. See, so yeah, the combos can be pretty robust, especially the top tier ones, but they're not the be all end all. Okay, so we're sort of just chipping along. Let's speed her up. Gardening researched. Cool, cool. Metal work. Yeah, so we could probably. Let's have a look at the gardening stuff here. Look at this. Forest. Trees can be harvested from trunks. Oh, and then what's this? Need more fruit to finish. Yeah, I believe this must have been added the just the last time I looked at this on Epic. So you can sort of reforest, but it, it costs a hefty amount of uh, fruit, which I don't think we have the, uh, this. We don't actually have the fertility here on this island, I believe, is the problem. But let's get some veggies in play. And uh, we could probably make some tea as well. Nice. Metalwork research complete. Bridge and school is coming. Iron smelter, toolsmith. Turns iron into ore. Um, yeah, we're going to need to be able to mine iron, which we get from these, these like automatons, which is pretty cool. I think we might just put a... Oh, no, here you go. Iron mine. Perfect. Put an iron mine there. Peeps' happiness are affected by their environment. Larger building project uh, buildings project gloom that makes them unhappy. Yeah, right. So we need to keep an eye on that as well. Probably use some more potatoes. Sort of going a bit overkill here. Let's build some more tools. There's something I'm not really strictly against is just just circumnavigating. Well, that's not the right term, but encircling my entire village with just buildings. And then as I need to break out, I'll just demolish and rebuild roads. Because um, why not? Uh, bridge is actually really handy. Um, kind of situational though. Let's just get some potato farms going. And you can see there we're, we've hit our population limit again.
Hmm. Bridge research complete. Okay. I guess school is just around the corner. How are we going here? Still need some... I mean, we... I guess I can hit repair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. So I'm reluctant to go tearing forests down whole cloth just yet. Let's destroy this. Until I can repopulate them with fruit. So our little iron mine is working away. Oh, upgrade. Ah, uh, we haven't researched that. That's fine. You can see here, we can build bridges. Yeah. Warehouse, again, probably need more tools. Let's queue some tools up. And here's all our sort of blacksmithing tech as well. Um, Let's do that. Get some new research school. This is essentially, here you go. Islands with empty accommodation and schools will create children who grow into peeps. So this is how we generate a higher population beyond our original vault people, which we're running out of. We've only got nine left, so it's perfect timing to start looking at schooling. You can see we're starting to run down a little bit on the resources. Uh, I guess we just dumped a lot of stone in, into all this. And funnily enough, the woodcutter doesn't actually need to be next to forests. He'll go and seek them out himself. We might actually delete this forest. Obviously, having him next to one or three makes a big difference to his production and his efficiency. But again, we're not necessarily playing for that right now. You know, we don't, we don't really want to get too bogged down in hyper-efficiency. But we do need tools. Yeah, right. So that's going to build away. Okay, cool. So I think that's enough to have a bit of a look at this game. Like I said, big favourite of mine. I've looked at it over the past year or so while it was in the epic build. It's done a lot to upgrade it and change it. Like There were even new upgrades like boulders and all that that I didn't see from last time. So this game's been really good at uh, sort of progressing along. To give you an idea, this is our view of our planet. It's very cute. That's all we can see. But as soon as we get a boat, we can start driving around and seeing the rest of it. Very cool. And, uh, and from what I understand, we can then go up to the next level and get a rocket ship to go to visit some other planets as well. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you're into city builders, you know, Anno, that sort of thing. Um, even, I suppose, Banished, that sort of stuff, even though I haven't looked at that in a very long time. Um, this will be right up your alley. Like I said, no combat, nothing like that. Just a zen little sort of city builder um, with a pretty well-considered uh, non-punishing gameplay loop and if you just sort of I, I do recall that as you start getting higher tier houses and that you start to run into you know happiness issues for your dudes which makes them move slow or if they're in a desert and they're not getting water or the appropriate clothes you have to make them clothes that work uh make sense in the biome that they're in then they'll start staying indoors so your production will stop so you'll need a colony from the mainland to start supplying supplies to help sort of dig them out of that hole. So it's very cool. It's always recoverable. 
Um, but there, there's definitely a difficulty to it without necessarily having all you poor little innocent people have to kill people uh, or get killed themselves. It's pretty cool. I really, really dig it. Anyway, let me know what you reckon, team. Uh, keep an eye out. This is something that we might stream just because I really enjoy this game a lot. Uh, otherwise, we might just leave it there for the time being, and I will catch you guys on the next one.